Welcome to the Free the Bear podcast, a podcast devoted to California independence. My name's Bill, and today my co-host Forbes and I discuss why we want out. We talk about why we feel there is a need for a California nation. So, sit back, relax, enjoy, and as always, Free the Bear. Grr. So, I did a little research today. I was looking up some recent articles and statistics. So this episode, we're going to talk about something we haven't yet, which is is silly. It should have been like the first thing we talked about. Why we support California independence. So I guess I'll start with you, Forbes. What are, give me your elevator pitch. And it's a long elevator. Let's say up the Sears yeah, Tower. Yeah, Sears Tower, okay, so Willis Tower, whatever they call it now, 112 stories. I guess to me, the biggest reason why to leave the United States is because I'm sick to death of waste and incompetence and stagnation. I, I'm sick to death that, for example, like we can't have the kind of infrastructure that Europe and Japan have. You know, we can't have the high speed rail. We can't have like the nice airports for the most part. We can't have decent highways. We can't have decent roads because again, the money's either being misdirected because we're going to pay for you know, Middle East War version 4.0. Um, the warfare thing really bothers the hell out of me because I feel like, again, there's no paying attention to domestic needs and growth. Everything is pretty much like, what's the latest Halliburton project? Uh, what, what, again, like we always have to invent a new enemy to go after. We have no ability to either negotiate or, again, get our snout out of anywhere. Um, I'm sick and tired of oil companies running us day in and day out. And then even though there's so many alternatives to uh, clean technology, which even if, again, you don't, for some reason you have some kind of like beef against clean technology and you think it's not the cleanest thing in the world and you think, you know, lithium mines or whatever we're talking about and that it's somewhat the same, even if you had that kind of beef or misunderstanding, the fact is, is that we are, not spending money and saving money through those technologies. They actually do save us a lot of things in the long term, especially like solar panels, you know, but all the homes have solar panels. We're going to be saving a hell of a lot of cash. This from a pure financial standpoint, but we can't do that because the old companies took over Congress. Uh, I'm sick of our Congress being such a gerontocracy where, you know, the average ages are going around 74, 75, and there's nothing wrong with being old. The wrong part is, is that these people have been old for the last 40 years in Congress, and they have no understanding of what actual life is inside the United States. I'm sick of, you know, Theo, um, the former chairman, current chair of like NorCal uh, CMP, put it very eloquently when he talked about how he was sick of subsidizing southern apartheid states and i think that's exactly the way we should look at them because of how they keep closing down voting sections how they keep ensuring that uh, you know they're they're completing a republican dominance in these states uh, I, i'm sick to death of like actually my money going out the window for that i think also i'm sick uh, and tired of the, no flexibility in actually getting anything done like every time a new thing happens in the united states that actually has meaning most of the time, it's like some kind of accident. The Supreme Court uh, poops out of its rear end. You know, like, for example, like uh, the last um, decision to end discrimination against uh, uh, the LGBTQ uh, community. Uh, that was by the Supreme Court, kind of like by accident. Barely, you know, one vote over uh, made that happen. Same thing with the uh, uh, decision to legalize gay marriage. This is never done by our Congress, our elected officials. This is done by pre- pretty much like the fiat of a kind of like, you know, for life Supreme Court, which by the way, is another ridiculous thing. Again, that you can be on the Supreme Court half dead and you can still make decisions for the rest of the country. That's a ridiculous system. And we can't change that because again, part of our system too is that we have senators, two senators per state who are going to go around and make decisions and California, which is a bigger population than Canada, has two senators in the Senate, same as Wyoming, which has less population or the same as 
my hometown of Long Beach, California. So there is a litany of this institutional stagnation, poor decision making, aging, decrepit leadership, also ones who again who should have been termed out a long time ago. I mean, thank God in California, you know, our assembly has uh, again the term limits. Uh, that something can never happen at the federal level because these people would have to vote on it and they'll never vote themselves out of power. So we have all this kind of this absolute nonsense and we have to keep continuing on and on with it. And there's no hope for reform because there's too many people with too much at stake against reform. And that's the reason why I, I'm just, I'm done with the federal government. And again, I feel like myself, um, you know, I feel like I, again, I am an American. I am an American person. I believe in American values. And I don't feel like America is being expressed anymore. It's something different and it's something gross. And I want to have the America I believe in happen in California. I agree with all of those things, 100%. I'm going to go in a different direction other than policy. I'm going to take a, a quote from Carl Bernstein, the famous journalist. We are right now in a, we are in a cold civil war. Oh. That's a very good term. And actually, that's something I didn't know Bernstein said, but I, I me and my friends kind of, I don't know, parallel thinking, I would say, is, is we talked about that too. This is a country where you can't even agree on facts, basic no. facts, it, talking even just in disaster, like with this coronavirus. America is incredibly divided. Large portion won't wear masks. They think it's fake. They, yeah. You know, so you have that. In 2010, I think, I don't know if I've quoted you this report, though, it's from a Stanford study. 50% of Republicans would be incredibly disappointed if their child married a Democrat. And that's 33% of Democrats would be incredibly disappointed if their parent, if their kid married a Republican. Right. Um, that is a big thing right now. And this was from Pew, the Pew research. 77% of Americans think this nation is greatly divided. Right. And that's, so, a, that's reality. I mean, it's not sustainable. And they say 70% of people who are alive today say this country is more divided than we were for Viet the Vietnam War. Right, which is, again, actually, I would, you know, I know Vietnam gets brought up as a kind of like a, an example of something within modern memory of, like, horrible division, but, like, it actually really wasn't as bad as it is today because, in my mind, the Vietnam War had proponents, both Democrats and Republicans, right? There was pro-hawkish people and there was doves, um, the Doves never really kind of had that kind of numbers. And again, it, it was also bipartisan on both sides. So there wasn't this partisanship thing kind of going on that is going on today. Also, you know, the, one of the biggest movies at that time period was The Green Berets, which is a horrible movie. It was basically John Wayne trying to reenact a World War II movie in Vietnam. That, that was a huge hit, including the song for that movie. So, I mean, like, I don't, you know, I, I think it's, there's a lot of like hippie baby boomers who are trying to rewrite history and try to make it look like they were kind of like a majority. And I don't think that was the case. I think for a lot of working class people, Americans, um, they, they were more or less with the war. And then, you know, Nixon kind of talked them down. And, you know, even though he inflicted levels of ultra violence in his term, he, he slowly kind of pulled out because again, you know, it's mostly it was a drain on the, the finances of the, the entire country. Plus, again, like, you know, we're losing ground against the Soviets all over the world at that time. Th that's the reason why we kind of changed course there. But it, I don't think it was that much of a division. It was, there was a, a vocal minority. But when Nixon said there was a silent majority, I think he was 100% right about that. Yes, there was, again, hippies and people, you know, uh, from a whole range of like uh, life that were against the Vietnam War, but I don't think it was on that level of division as we're seeing today. It was not really that cold civil war. I, I think that was again that some revisionist history by um, kind of like ex hippies uh, saying that they can like there was a lot of numbers there. Yes, there was massive marches and protests, uh, but there really I don't think it was on the same level as today. 
The riots that happened in 68 had nothing to do with Vietnam, had to do everything with Martin Luther King's assassination. And even then, those kind of riots, you know, and protests were mostly black majority as opposed to white majority uh, kind of protests. So again, I take some issue with that. But again, I, I see what the, what the idea is, though. And I, I, long story short, I'm just saying that we're way worse off. Oh, yeah. I mean, both. I think the majority of people are right on both of those statistics. And, and you brought this up, and it, it's obvious, but with gerrymandered congressional districts, what is the benefit or motivation of a congressperson to work with someone across the aisle? There's no, yeah, I mean, again, they're already locked in. It's kind of like a problem actually we have here in California. You know, again, um, California has kind of like that system kind of set up that like there's people who can just go, you know, further to the left or right and they'll just lock down their district forever. Well, until they're termed out basically. And then we get a rollover. But the, the same thing's kind of happening all over the place with these kind of parties uh, making sure that they can maintain a hold the reason why I'm for California, another reason it would be that if we did have California independence, we can start clean. And that's something that has, that needs to be done because again, like there's a lot of people with a lot of investments who are not going to just walk away. There, I think, and I don't think we've brought this up before, but there's real tribalism in America where in the sense that you have the Northeast is really its own nation. Mm-hmm. You have the West Coast, which is really its own nation. Right. The South and Texas are very, even though they're far right, there is a different brand of far right in the Midwest. Yeah, then like, say like the West, like Wyoming, Montana, the big ranch and sky country kind of places. So there is a huge just tribalism where coastal elite people, and I, I got to admit, I've been guilty of this before. Think of the people in the Midwest as rubes, you know, that they're unsophisticated, especially in my house, very anti-Confederate, like this whole Confederate flag thing. I'm like, oh, gets me all steamed because I, my dad loved the Civil War and, you know, we're very anti-Confederacy. Yeah, so right. I, admit, like, I came from Illinois and again, Illinois is the land of Lincoln. Like no one, no one supports the Confederate flag BS. <laughs> no one li- likes that crap. I always thought it was this. You know, even if we never thought it was like a racial thing, we just always thought it was just like, you know, basically white trash who just thought they're better than themselves. Yeah. And I mean, that's just another great example of tribalism right now. Yeah. Where, I mean, I don't see a difference in evil when it comes to like the Confederacy as I do like Soviet Russia, like fascist Italy. Nazis maybe... A little, uh, they, they kind of take the cake. I'll, I'll give them their own league. But like the Confederate flag to me is a symbol of hatred and evil. Yeah, no, it, it, yeah. Well, it's just, to me, it's on the same level of like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't, well, actually, I, I guess, you know, you could say basically Nazi Germany. You know, sometimes I was trying to be kind of more clever there for a second and try to say like, you know, like, you know, the South, Confederacy was more like a kind of an early version of like apartheid uh, South Africa, right? But actually, Nazi Germany is actually more correct because I don't think what people ever really understand is that a plantation at that time was pretty much a privatized concentration camp. Sure was. They could do anything to those people. They could, you know, rape, beat, murder, uh, pretty much at will. They were never going to be held for their crimes. You know, just because it wasn't a government-led, you know, effort that was pretty much, you know, I guess in a good old American way, it was all privatized. And uh, yeah, the, the, the plantations were concentration camps. And uh, yeah, I would say that, that that's exactly the same level as Nazi Germany. All yeah. right. Now that you said it, I'll say the same thing. Thank you for breaking that wall down for me. I'll say another thing. There is so much stress caused by the divide, divided nation that we live in, mm-hmm. that more than half of the people come election night are going to be crying, have anger, and you're going to be so distressed while the other smaller majority, because if you include third parties, you know, the, most people are not going to vote for the president, the person who becomes president. The people who won are going to be on Twitter 
just laughing and making fun of the people who lost. There's going to be videos. Oh, yeah, it'll be a very mean-spirited thing, you know? This hatred is not sustainable. It stresses the hell out of me. I don't know if it stresses the hell out of you. It does because, like, you know, I, I keep thinking that, again, like, you know, what, what rough beast uh, slouches towards uh, Bethlehem to be born. You know, I keep thinking, like, what's around the corner here? Because, again, this is not sustainable. It's obviously not. Politicized violence will be a wave of the future. You know, I mean, my fear really, and I think that this is going to get closer and closer, especially as we near Election Day, is that um, I, I'm a big nerd of Northern Ireland's history. And Northern Ireland was a place and still is that was divided between two camps. There was the nationalist Republican, which in their terms basically meant people for unification with the rest of Ireland. And then the other camp was the unionist and loyalist camp, which was people who preferred to stay with the UK. And for almost like 30 years, these two communities hated each other, lived next door to each other, didn't really have much difference in outlook or talk or, or I always say like, you know, they basically look the same. If you're an outsider, you could not really tell the difference between a nationalist Republican or a unionist by the way they talked. The only way you could pick up on anything was, you know, if they went to a Catholic church or they went to a, a non-Catholic church. And then if they had a union jack in their front yard or they had the, the tricolor of the uh, Irish Republic in the front yard. But you wouldn't really tell. And I feel like that's where America is going. You're going to get these two camps of Democrats and Republicans, and they're already despising each other constantly. And they have their own symbols. Like, you know, uh, what's the big thing right now we see constantly with Republicans is you see either Trump flags or, again, if they're being a little more clever, they're having the Gadsden flag, you know, the don't step on me, you snake flag. Yes. And, and you know, also the, uh, uh, the Blue Lives Matter, Blue Line flag. Uh, that gets flown around. So they already have their own developed symbols. Um, the, the Democrats really don't have anything close to that, but I guess like their lack of symbols is almost a symbol itself. But anyway, long story short, um, you're already seeing that kind of same thing that happened in Northern Ireland happen here. And I don't think it's a really good thing to be living through that kind of decades of assassinations, uh, kneecappings, bombings, you know, again, uh, mass riots, uh, uh, basic progr programs where like, you know, you had one community swarm another community and burn down their houses. So it's kind of like we're looking down the barrel of that. I think we're getting closer to that. And I think that before it gets to that point, maybe just let parts of the country just start doing their own thing. Well, that's what we want. So that's, let's say that's outcome A, that there's balkanization. We break up into one, two, let's say five countries. And, you know, it may change here and there. It's either that or there, what do you, how about this? What is more likely Republicans and Democrats come to compromises and policies and there's real reform in America where you have term limits, you know, you have Republicans or Democrats that are looking out for the people, not the, you know, the elite. What's more likely that or this continued like they're playing for keeps it's the Trump supporters want total victory and progressives want total victory. Let's be honest. We, we want as much as we could talk compromise. Our ultimate goal is to get everything progressive. Just well, like, can, can I, can I stop you there though, Bill? Cause I think stop me. They're, I know what you mean by like the total victory thing, but really I, I feel like more needs to be, dumped on the doorstep of the Republicans. Uh, Republicans are, are the ones who are the gerrymanders. Republicans are the ones who have basically tried to tilt things in their favor, either through court appointments or, again, like, you know, utilizing a non-representative body like the Senate to try to keep reform down. Uh, you know, Mitch McConnell was the one who opened the door that, oh, hey, we're not going to replace the Supreme Court justice, even though we've done this multiple times, because, quote, unquote, it's an election year. You know, and then he's just pulling out things out of his, you know, his turtle ass. So I, I really think that progressives always, to me, 
and actually, I would say th this kind of annoys me about progressives, to be honest, is that th they seem to always want to have some kind of fair debate against people who are not debating in good faith. I don't think they are at any point. I don't think that any of these people, especially when you have these, you know, super factoids that come out from the Republican Party that are just complete nonsense. Progressives at least try to pay attention to some sort of truth and standards. I mean, yes, it could be obnoxious at times, uh, some of the things that they say and some of their actions, but more or less, that does actually happen more in their favor. No, uh, I don't think anyone can argue that within reason. Uh, I'll even, I'll throw this out. Republicans are more effective of getting what they want than Democrats or progressives. Oh yeah. Cause again, like they're, they're, they have scorched earth tactics. They, you know, and also again, like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you, didn't you say always before you're a big chess player? Yes. Well, it's kind of like if you're playing chess, but the other side is this, you know, the moment you stand up to go to the bathroom, they take away a couple of pawns. Oh, they're cheating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But are they going to stop cheating? Oh, no, absolutely not. There's no way in hell, which is kind of the reason why I think that, uh, you know, again, uh, California needs to make a pretty good exit here because, again, you know, when you have someone who, if you're playing a game with someone and you find out the other side is cheating, the only responsible thing is just to say, to call them out on it and then also stop playing the game and stop pretending otherwise. So, yeah, I think... I'm trying to think of other things that I want to discuss when it comes to why I support California independence. I, at the end of the day, and maybe this is the capitalist in me, mm -hmm. I want to see if a real progressive California can work. And let's see if Alabama, unchained by us libtard cuckolds, <laughs> thrive with a conservative nation. Like, well, real, like, let's get, you know, Christ in every classroom. Let's give tax breaks to super wealthy people. Let's cut social welfare problems. Let them have at it. And let's see who wins. Maybe they're right, Forbes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the Kansas experiment needed more time. Uh, right. Good reference, by the way, the Kansas experiment, which is an unmitigated disaster. But, yeah, no, I mean, how do I put this? Um, yeah, you know, there was the idea that states would be laboratories of democracy, right? That, you know, if you had a certain level of like, sort of like a weak central government, you let every state just kind of handle their own affairs, you know, pretty much they'll, they'll figure out what works, what doesn't, and they'll copy each other or not, you know. Um, it, that sounds fine to me. Maybe that's actually not a bad idea. And again, especially with a more autonomous or independent California, that would be something that would really showcase again like yeah maybe california sinks you know maybe we can get too tied down with regulation and you know we become some kind of stagnant you know france on steroids or whatever you know um then maybe alabama becomes like the next singapore but uh, i'm just gonna bet no they don't because again singapore always you know uh try to have education alabama uh despises education so no the, these places who have like almost the same amount of population as like a Singapore, they'll never pull off anything like that. This is also the evil capitalist in me. I want more LGBTQ people in California. Um, not just because I, you know, they're seem, you know, they're good people, whatever, everyone, there's good and bad everyone, but statistically they make more money and they commit less crime. I want Alabama to force out, 10% of its most productive citizens and force them to California. Well, you know, what's so funny is that, you know, these, again, these people who more or less think they're morally superior or again, maybe, and, or, you know, the master race, right. They always drive out the people who actually did something. And they actually like have the skills, you know what I mean? You know, they, they would, Alabama, I'm sure would drive out gays. Uh, probably after a while, probably drive out Jews too, you know, would again, um, Jewish people were driven out from Nazi Germany, even though, again, they were like the cream of the crop when it came to their uh, uh, science and intelligentsia. So I could totally see the same thing, too, because, again, prejudiced people never realize the merits of the people they're prejudiced against, and they will just do anything to really basically drive them out, and then in the end, they're just, you know, the, the king of the antique. Yeah, that's, that's, 
let let's see who's right and you know what we might find that there's some balkanized region in the midwest that's a little from column a and a little from column b and they might tend to be the best you know nation let's see what happens but it's yeah but no it's again it's that's not i think one of the things is there's a psychological hold that people need to get over which is that you know like somehow there's not the united states as we know it and parts of it actually did go independent that somehow the whole house of cards will collapse and that you know all of a sudden we'll end up as you know i don't know is this i don't know what they're thinking like syria or just somalia or whatever but other places around the world have divorced and broken up and it's not the end all be all you know and actually some places do better some places do worse i mean for the west coast of the former soviet union lithuania latvia uh, estonia uh they're doing absolutely fine better than they were ever before um the czech republic and slovakia they were you know czechoslovakia they broke up they're fine it's absolutely fine they're not like you know in the killing fields now yugoslavia that went really wrong but a yugoslavian situation there was so much more going on with this the fact that uh the ethnic prejudice never ended and there was unresolved you know revenge things going on there i don't i don't see that kind of level of ultra violence have the united states i mean i wouldn't 100 percent bet, bet on that because again we just talked about tribalism earlier but i would say that you know it's more likely to have a nice clean divorce as opposed to oh well we're going to start shooting our neighbors because again their last names end with a vowel i i think deep down republicans don't want california to leave because they deep down know they need us yeah i think so too and they, they also know that I mean, for multiple reasons, between economic, uh, the subsidies that these states are getting, uh, if that gets cut off, like, what are they going to do? You know, they're actually going to have to educate people and try to attract a workforce that actually means something? That'd be crazy. Well, and how about this? When Alabama, and I'm using Alabama as the punching bag, but whatever, the Southern Confederacy rises again. Yeah. When they start making all sorts of bigoted laws, who's Europe going to trade with? Are they going to trade with them or California? Exactly. They'll turn into pride states. You know, again, when they start like having like extreme anti LGBTQ laws, or again, like, you know, maybe they they reinforce and like say, like, you know, oh, Plessy versus Ferguson, you know, separate but equal was actually appropriate. You know, once they do that, they'll turn into pariahs. No one's going to deal with them. You know, they'll they'll turn into like mini Irans, where it's just like only like the, you know, only a few people actually still keep trading with them. It'll be Russia, Turkey, and Brazil. Yes, exactly. and the Middle East. They'll be pumping out oil like crazy. But like also too, like, you know, these states, uh, especially the old Southern Confederacy, um, what exactly do they bring to the table of the United States anymore? It's not like cotton is king, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing really, besides like tourism and like... Tourism some, in Florida. Yeah. I mean, like you got shrimp. Well, you used to have a thriving shrimp industry before you know, Kablu kablooey on the old oil rigs but um in pollution but yeah i mean you had a thriving shrimp business you had fishing you had a, you know uh i'm trying to think like you had nuts a lot of peanuts um but i mean california still dwarfs the south when it comes to agriculture i think what people don't realize is and the, even people who might be interested in california independence i don't think they realize that how big california is and how strong it is because I think our economy would still dwarf even a, a, like a, a reunited confederacy. Um, I mean, Texas is a powerhouse in a lot of ways, but Texas is really dependent on oil, which has crashed. Uh, also, Texas right now, because of their good policies, is uh, pretty much the, the biggest hotspot of the COVID-19 crisis. So, the, again, like, if that's the only card they got to play is Texas and, you know, uh, tourism in Florida, uh, that, that's, that, that's not looking too great for them. And, again, these are the people who think that they're economic geniuses because uh, they think that, uh, you know, if five people own 50% of the wealth, somehow that's a healthy economy. So, no, it's, they're, they're kind of done after we leave. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, you know, Maybe they can just uh, figure out uh, what's so special and what they can do next. Well, and it, it, it might be an awakening for a lot of people. Even just the threat of Cal... I, 
I always say to people, the threat of California leaving, hopefully if it, when it gains traction, is going to force Democrats to become more progressive. It They're going to have to choose to be either Republicans, like, you know, wedge issue Republicans, or they're going to have to be progressive. Yeah. And what was kind of funny to me is that Democrats are such a dumb party because it, it's a very easy to showcase that most of the times when they've had their huge victories, it was because they ran on extremely progressive platforms, number one, and then number two, enacted them and actually push forward with it. I mean, like we can go back in like history, like for example, like New Deal, Franklin Roosevelt and his reelection margins were huge. And again, there was a, you know, everyone was a Democrat. Like back in those days when FDR was around, like you can be elected dog catcher unless you were a Democrat. So these ideas that again, like even if you just wanted to, you know, if you're just a cynical politician, if you paid attention in two seconds in history class, you realize like, oh, if we improve people's lives, they pay us back with votes. Yeah. And I'll even go the last two Republicans were less warmongers than the Democrats they were running against. Bush, when he ran the first time, well, when he won election over Gore, mm -hmm. he was, let's stay out of the Middle East. Yeah, no nation building. He made a big deal about that before 9-11. That was his whole platform. And I think that helped push him to be, you know, I mean, he didn't win the popular vote, obviously, but he, you know, was in shooting distance because of that. Because people were sick of, like, you know, of uh, what was it Clinton was doing in Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia. Yeah, and the Dem I'll even add in, although I, I hate when they blame third parties, but Gore being not the peace candidate allowed Ralph Nader to gain steam and traction. Yeah, and that makes total sense because we were bombing the hell out of, you know, was it uh, of uh, Serbia at the time? So I mean, like, yeah. It, it, again, it's not that hard. It's just, a, but you know, when you're, I don't know, it's just the way these people go up the ladder and the way the special interests come in and like you know start slinging money around and it somehow dulls their senses. Or you know, the people, especially politicians, are not exactly always the most brave, and so they always just take the easy way out instead of just like looking at the you know what is happening in the country and going, you know what, if I actually ran a little bit further to the left, I'm sure I can actually pick up some more. Actually, I can do this, but they don't do it. And, again, and that's another reason why California should leave is because people in these kind of political systems are so driven by special interest groups. And then, you know, when I mean special interest, I don't want to be like lumpy in unions because as a democratic organization, I'm going to say straight out, the big corporations with the tons of cash or there are interest groups that are a conglomeration of major corporations. They, they just come out with all this money. And again, it's like nothing's going to be done. And we're just going to sink further into stagnation. And I don't know. It, it's very upsetting to me, actually. And again, like, you know, the reason why I believe in the California National Party is because I really want to see change. And I want to see an American system. And I don't think America as a whole can accept an American system anymore. Oh, we are a divided state for sure. Well, there you have it. Another episode of the Free the Bear podcast. Thank you very much for listening. If you can, give it a thumbs up. Even if you didn't like it, give it that good old thumbs up and subscribe. I'm very old, but I've been told there is a bell that you're supposed to push or ding or something. So do that. For more information about the California National Party, go to californianational.party or on Twitter, vote underscore CNP. And in conclusion, Free the, the Bear. Grr.